to help them do this, and you know, basically, is, you know, we do it every year to preserve all the inductees. Um, first question: What individual had the greatest impact on your wrestling career? Well, there's been a few. Uh, uh, Vince Zoraro, I don't, he, he, he's an Olympic official. He's in the Hall of Fame. Uh, he passed away about 10 years ago. But uh, back in the uh, 80s, we would travel together to Europe to do the coaches and officiating clinic. He would do the officiating, and then I would teach the skills. Uh, we did that for 10 years, and it was uh, uh, really a great thing because for the soldiers to learn, you have to know the rules. And he, you know, he's very well, at, and he was a FILA, FILA one official. And then I taught, taught the skills of basic freestyle and Greco. And uh, we were on a few teams together, and we, we were friends until his passing. He loved threats. I haven't heard that in a while. It's not UWW and all that stuff, so it's funny how it changes. But um, As you were growing up, did you have a, a wrestling idol, or was there something that pulled you into the sport? Um, it was uh, actually through the military, but uh, in high school, I was a sophomore and, and, and I was walking through the school and I heard this noise coming from the gym and it was a high school wrestling match. I went in and I was intrigued by it because of the noise and the coaching and the, and the athletes. And so the next year, my junior year, I went out for the team. And of course, the first year you don't really win, but I, I, I enjoyed it and I, I made the team. Which was, which was good, uh, and then I didn't didn't do well in the states or sections. But the following year, I went to the military, and then from there, I had an opportunity to be with some great coaches and was able to make the army team and train. And uh, from there, I I uh, excelled. So you just kind of stumbled across it at, at school, and it was something you were attracted to. Something pulled you in. Yeah, yeah. I, I saw the uh, you know the fans yelling and the coaches, and they're out there on the mat, which I thought was uh, something I would like to try. And uh, it was different back in the early '60s, wrestling. You didn't you don't have the opportunities you have now, because those those. Uh, by the time these kids get to high school, they're, all, they're already five-time, six-time world champ. And, <laughs> and they uh, uh, well on their way to, to do great things. I have my two grandsons here. They won 16, won 14, and they, uh, they're doing well in wrestling. One, one made the varsity uh, freshman year in high school, and the other one was fourth in, in the state in eighth grade so it's uh and i enjoy seeing them participate in the sport um what i guess this is kind of outside of wrestling but what personal attribute contributed most to your success in wrestling um the people the coaches teammates I enjoyed that. It was a, you know, having a coach to would teach you and learn, and then teammates that you can share things with, and uh, I liked that element, and I liked the competition, uh, and uh, I uh, would look forward for tournaments and dual matches and things like that, and opportunity to learn. Was there a, a moment in the sport, you know, it seems like it's probably one of the most elite athletes and wrestlers where so you felt something clicked, sometimes someone says something to you or something happened, or do you remember a moment like, this is my sport and what, what was going on there? Uh, well, I remember it was 1971, we were wrestling at the New York AC, 
in New York. And that, back then, it was one of the best tournaments on the East Coast. Uh, and uh, I was in the Army at the time. And uh, I uh, won my first two, and I was in the finals. Uh, and I was wrestling uh, someone from the New York Athletic Club. He was an Iranian. He, he was past world medalist and was a national champion. He was uh, probably eight to nine years older than me, but, but Bill Farrell, who was the AC coach, he was the Olympic coach for 72, that great team they had. And uh, he asked Bill Farrell, who, who do I have next coach? And he goes, you got Winter from Army. He looked at me and goes, that's good news. But then the match started and something you should never do is charge. He charged that match, hit him with a headlock and pinned him in 12 seconds. And Bill Farrell says, no, that's bad news. And I kept that name ever since. Everybody calls me bad news, so. That's a great story. That's, a good, that's like the real deal. That's awesome. <laughs> All right. Um, well, this, I kind of jumped. So I was just trying to conversation on my own question, but following their questions. Um, throughout your wrestling career, what is the single most memorable match or event? Uh, for, for me, it was uh, 1970. Eight at the World Military Championships in Tehran, and uh, I made it to the finals, and I was wrestling Iranian. And it, as you know, in our, Iran, that's the number one sport, and they had this arena just for wrestling. They had 20,000 spectators, plus the Ayatollah brother was there, who was a lieutenant general, sitting up in his throne. But uh, when uh, uh, going, flying over to uh, Tehran, we left New York and then flew to Frankfurt. And then there was a skyjacking on the uh, at the, at the airport, and so every, everything was was shut down. And so we spent like three or four hours on the plane, and we couldn't get off. But uh, then we then we left and we flew to flew to Tehran. By the time we got to Tehran, I was probably up for 20-some hours, and I got sick. I got a cold, and I was coughing and sneezing, and we went to the hotel and uh, asked to see the team doctor, who was an Iranian doctor. And he came up to, to our, my room, and he looked, you know, at a stethoscope and was checking me out, and he was a doctor. so. He gave me these uh, pills to take and this spray, you know, which I thought was, it was for my nose, but my nose was running. So that night I took the pills and put the spray in my nose and I um, uh, slept pretty good. Next morning I got up, I felt, I felt better. I said, hey, this is okay. Uh, didn't feel 100%, but I felt a lot better. And then, uh, I made I made it to the to the finals with the Iranian, and uh, I was in the uh, tunnel warming up, and uh, they uh, uh, announced my name, Floyd Venta, USA. And then they, they whistled, instead of booing, they they whistle. So I went to the mat, and they had, they had television cameras there, and they focused in it on me and. The, I, the I, uh, Iranian they announced his name, and he was on the shoulders of his comrades, and they were running around the, the mat with him on his shoulders, and they were going, Ali, Ali, Akbar, to do, 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 Iran, all 20,000, you know, kind of intimidating, you know. Uh, so uh, we uh, uh, came to Matt, and they, they said, uh, we shook hands, you know, ready, wrestle. And uh, so when the first 20 seconds, he, he got a deep single on me, and an Iranian single, but, but he, he picked me up, and then he sw I swept out, and what happened is I hit my shoulder on the mat, and of course I, I screamed, and they stopped the match, and 
they had this medic, I ran a medic who had a spray bottle for alcohol. He came out and sprayed it, really sprayed it in my face. Got in my eyes and I couldn't see. And, you know, but I got up and shook it off, you know, tough. So ready, wrestle. He got another takedown. He, went, he did a cross face, but he hit me in the eye and he turned me in my back, my eye closed, you know. So uh, that same doctor came out spraying the, you know, got it in my face again. And I, do, 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 Ibran, Ali, Ali, Akbar, you know. They were having a great time because the American was getting, a, getting beat up. So the, uh, uh, I, I, when I went and sat down in the chair, I, they had three minute, three periods back then, and you get a minute's rest. So after the first period, I came and sat down. My, my eye was clo closed, my nose was bleeding, my shoulder was down here, and the coach looks at me. And of course, you want the coach to say something positive motivates you. He goes, damn, Floyd, you look bad. <laughs> so I said, well, what should I do, coach? He goes, stay low and circle left. And I said, what does that mean? He says, well, if you circle left, the exit's over there. You can get the hell out of here, you know. He said, so. But I ended, I ended up losing. I lost the mat. I lost in the finals. And I was really... Uh, uh, sore as you can imagine. I didn't go to the banquet that night and I stayed in the room because we're, we're leaving the next day and I, so I was asleep and I heard this knock on my door and I opened it. It was the Iranian that that beat me. I was, what, what's he doing here? And he with the same size he wanted to uh, change clothes, you know, uh, warm-ups, pants, you know, I had blue jeans. Uh, so I, but I could barely get out of bed. He went over to my suitcase, taking stuff out, and and he left his warm up uh, and, a, and a, his swirly, his smelly shirt. And the next morning, I get up to put my. I didn't have any clothes, so I had to wear his his warm up, you know. Which, but I didn't care. So, but then we flew back to Frankfurt, and I I, bought, I got some clothes there in Frankfurt. So that was my. Uh, that was my match in I Iran. That's true. <laughs> um, <laughs> we kind of uh, went over this. Uh, what made you get involved in the sport of wrestling? Uh, I got involved. Uh, I, I, was, I, loved, I loved the sport, and I found out that I was a lot better coach than I was a, a wrestler. And what I did is that I was able to parlay that into, you know, being a national coach for 20 years, coached two Olympic teams, eight, nine world championships. And I actually coached on the Army team three Olympic medalists. Uh, I coached Randy Couture. He was on the team for three or four years. Uh, and uh, I had a connection with them. Because I, I went through and I knew what they had to do at that world-class level. And uh, we were able to, to do good things. And I have about 20 from the past Army teams that are here tonight. I told them to get a haircut. So they to... uh, all right. If you had the opportunity to start your career over, is there anything you would change? Uh, no, I felt I was pretty fortunate in life. I, had, I have a great family. They're here. Uh, my wife of 50 years next year. Uh, so I was, I feel very fortunate and uh, to have these friends uh, and the athletes that I coached. We're still friends today and they call me all the time. You know. Is there, what would you like people to remember about you? Stay low and circle left. <laughs> no, I, I, that uh, I was able to help uh, them uh, get, it didn't matter if they got, if they won the gold medal in the Olympics or if they got a bronze medal in the Armed Forces Championship, that I was able to, to contribute to them, you know, and that's, uh, 
that's the for me the the best. One question for me: Co coaching the military or the armed forces boys versus the non armed for armed forces guys. Is, did you find any differences, or did you unload on the armed forces? They were telling us about Death Valley or the, oh, the hill that you'd make them run. It, they see it seemed like you kept backing up further each time when they were doing sprints and stuff. Well, uh, I uh, I knew that if you were going if you were going to win, you had to be in better condition than your opponent. If you weren't in better condition, you're not going to win. So we did a lot of conditioning and a lot of running, uh, and that's a way. Wrestling also you need to wrestle, but if you wrestle hard all the time, you get injured, you know. Uh, and we do that, but running and pushing yourself is that way you can find out about who you are and uh, we did uh, we uh, d did that did that uh, and uh, we, we had days where we would go hard and days that we wouldn't go hard but uh, they uh, I remember Somebody on the team got in some kind of trouble or something, and uh, came back to me, and uh, you know, and we we were there uh, as guests, and we kind of looked, you know, down upon because we you know we didn't wear our uniforms, we were always in sweats and getting ready for the armed forces or the nationals. So I had this colonel call me because some. I don't know, making noise in the barracks, and uh, he uh, um, was kind of kind of cheered me out a little bit, and then I said I'll take care of it. So, what I did the next morning, I get, I got everybody up. I went to the track, and I, I think we did 30 200 meters, uh, 10 400 meters, uh, for about an hour and a half, two hours. And then we we went over and did the circuits in the gym, and then we had like five matches that afternoon, and it was we got done at five, and then I was over in the dorms, and he was supposed to be here, Jimmy Deal, he, he wrestled at West Point, but he he was in bed with the cover up to here, and I I walked by the room, he goes, Coach, today you open a can of whoop ass. 